Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. Today we're going to talk about is it illegal to carry a lockpick or to own a lockpick? Are those things illegal? And there's a whole class of tools that may or may not be illegal depending on what state you're in, but you should know this, especially if you're curious about it. So what we're talking about generally first is lockpicks, or believe it or not, at law they're often called pick locks. But a lockpick is what most people would call it. And if you think about your basic lock that has a key that goes to it, not a combination lock, but a, a lock with just a key that opens it, uh, you know that a locksmith or a licensed professional can go up to the lock and, and using two tools can stick something in there and kind of play with the pins that are what keep the lock locked and get the lock to open without a key. And that's called a lock pick. Now, when you see it on TV and McMillan and wife, and they walk up to a door and they and they take a, 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 a like a straightened out hairpin or a you know a paper clip and stick it in the door and the door pops open, uh, that only works if the script says it will. In real life, that's not how you do it. But I'm not here to explain to you how to pick locks because I don't know. But you generally have to use a thing uh, where you you apply some some tension on the cylinder, and as you apply the tension, you then rake over the pins with the lock pick itself and you get the pins to go into the positions they would if the key was there and then you can open the lock. So that's what we're talking about is a lock pick. Would it be illegal if a police officer pulled you over and discovered for whatever reason that you had lock picks on you? Okay. And so the first thing I have to tell you about the lock picks, the pick locks is it varies wildly by state. Okay. Some states say they're illegal. Some states have no laws about them. And some states say they're simply illegal depending on when you get caught with one. So I'm going to give you the best two examples that I can think of. One is Michigan, one's California. And I actually remember looking this up when I was in law school because I'd heard about pick locks but not lock picks. And I discovered that that, of course, is a California thing. But uh, in Michigan, it's MCL 750.116, right out of the blue books behind me. Um, and it says burglar tools, possession. And it says, possession of burglar tools. And here's where it gets interesting. Any person who shall knowingly have in his possession any nitroglycerin or other explosive, thermite, engine, machine, tool, or implement, device, chemical, or substance, adapted and designed for cutting or burning through, forcing or breaking open in any building, room, vault, safe, or other depository, in order to steal therefrom any money or other property, knowing the same to be adapted and designed for the purpose aforesaid, with intent to use or employ the same for the purpose aforesaid, shall be guilty of a felony punishable by imprisonment in the state prison not more than 10 years. So the thing that you should catch your attention there right off the bat is it's a 10-year felony if you run afoul of that big, long, run-on sentence I just read you. But that, of course, is the problem. You'll notice this is possession of burglar tools, and it lists a whole bunch of them. Nitroglycerin. Remember on Gunsmoke, they had an episode about that. Or other explosive. Thermite. Engine. Okay, and I think they're talking about some kind of device, but they're not talking about the thing in your car. But machine. And then it says tool or implement. Okay? And I'm not going to read the other things and get into the other things. Because it says tool or implement. And then there's another subsection that says adapted and designed for forcing or breaking open any building, room, vault, safe, or other depository. So the thing you have, if it is in fact a lockpick, would be a tool or implement adapted and designed for forcing or breaking open any building, room, vault, safe, or other depository, right? Okay, that's, that's, that's what it's for. But it says, if you are knowingly in possession of this thing, in order to steal therefrom any money or other property, knowing the same to be adapted for that purpose, with intent to use or employ the same for that purpose, shall be guilty. So you'll notice there's a whole bunch of things that talk about your intent, and, and none of them simply say mere possession is illegal. Okay, There are some things you don't want in your possession, because they don't have to prove that you got it in your possession for the wrong reason. But you can say, for instance, that you have a lock pick and a lock picking set along with the other part, and, and you have these devices, and you're not using them for a bad purpose, then there's no law against it. As long as you're not doing it with the intent, uh, for the purpose aforesaid, with intent to use or employ the same for the purpose aforesaid. And so a lot of people go, what's, what's the purpose of this law? Well, the purpose of this law is... That if the police come by and they see you like 
peering in the windows of a house and you're wearing all black clothing and you're you know planning on breaking and stealing something but they catch you in the act before you've broken in and they and they and they pull you aside and they're going you know you're trespassing clearly and you're looking in the windows don't argue with me too much here because it's a hypothetical but they search you and they find on your person uh, a bunch of stuff that was designed to help you break into the building and commit burglary so you may have had a crowbar on you, you may have had a lockpick on you, you may have had a flashlight, a grappling hook, because that's cool, uh, some rope, uh, maybe some uh, pepper spray, who knows. But you got a bunch of stuff on you, and it looks like you're all, you know, set up for burglary. Well, they would be able to then make the argument that it appeared that you were doing this uh, for the purpose of breaking into some place and you have in your possession burglar tools, okay, burglar tools. And that's common in a lot of these settings. I've had people say, like, for instance, you know, is it illegal to own a police scanner? Because you can go on to the internet and buy a police scanner. And uh, in the old days, you could go to Radio Shack and buy a police scanner. And um, the, the point is that owning a police scanner is not by itself necessarily against the law. But there are some places where if you had the police scanner in your car and you were using it to try to evade the police, there are some places where they could actually say that's against the law because you're using it for a different purpose than, than, than that which they allow. So uh, I'm not going to go there. We're talking about lock picks and burglary tools. But keep, keep in mind again that they're putting in the same category along with the nitroglycerin uh, and other explosives, explosives and thermite a lock pick. Okay, so the point is, if, if you've got one in your house, not illegal. You got one on you and you're driving down the road, enjoying your day, going to or from work or to and from the bank or church, unless you're going to those places with the intent to break in there and they can somehow prove that, uh, mere possession of these things is not illegal, at least not in Michigan. Okay, again, it varies by state. So poke around, find out what your state says. You might want to run a search on Fill in the blank of your state and then criminal code and then lock pick. But make sure you try lock pick, one word, two words, hyphenated, and then pick lock. Because what happens in California is interesting. Every person having upon him or her in his or her possession a pick lock, crow, key bit, crowbar, screwdriver, vice grip pliers, Water pump pliers, slide hammer, slim jim, tension bar, lock pick, lock pick gun, tubular lock pick, bump key, floor safe door puller, master key, ceramic or porcelain spark plug chips or pieces, or other instrument or tool with intent to feloniously break into or enter any building, railroad car, aircraft or vessel, trailer coach or vehicle as defined in the vehicle code, or who shall knowingly make or alter or shall attempt to make or alter any key or other instrument named above so that the same will fit or open the lock of a building, railroad car, aircraft, vessel, trailer coach, or vehicle as defined in the vehicle code without being requested to do so by some person having the right to open the same, or who shall make, alter, or repair any instrument or thing knowing or having reason to believe that it is intended to be used in committing a misdemeanor or felony, is guilty of a misdemeanor. And this is any of the structures mentioned in another section shall be deemed to be a building within the meaning of this section. So first of all, look at that long list of tools and notice this is pick lock. And elsewhere it says lock pick gun, tubular lock pick, bump key. And so there's a whole classification of things which if they're designed to get around a locked thing or through a locked thing or to unlock a thing and you weren't requested to do so, and you're doing it with intent, then in fact, it is a misdemeanor under this section. Um, so a couple other things. Uh, notice that it says uh, vice grips, a pair of vice grips. I got a pair of vice grips in my kitchen right now. And, and I've got a pair that's in my toolbox, vice grips. Uh, handiest tool possibly made by man. So vice grips. But the point is that if, if a cop again is driving by, he sees you casing the joint, you're wearing all black, it's dark out, you're trespassing, and you climbed a couple of fences to get where you are, and you're peering in the window with a flashlight, looking furtively about you, and you're planning on breaking in, and the cop busts you. And in your back pocket are a pair of pliers, or a pair of vice grips, okay? Uh, it turns out that the uh, uh, vice grips, or the vice grip pliers, 
are in fact now considered to be uh, burglarious and larcenous instruments. Burglarious. <laughs> By the way, this is chapter 3 of uh, California's uh, Penal Code, section 466. Burglarious and larcenous. I'll put those words in the screen because I've never seen them before. I've, I mean, I've seen larcenous before, but not burglarious. Um, but again, notice that it's not just the lock picks. It's also the key bit, the crowbar, uh, the screwdriver, uh, and so on. And, and again, let's, let's suppose that the cop decided to kick back and watch what you were up to, okay? And you looked about furtively and thinking you were not being watched, despite the fact that you were, shows how much you know, that you then reach behind you out of your backpack and you pull a crowbar out. It's the only thing you got in the backpack along with some uh, uh, juice boxes. And you take the crowbar and you pry the window open. And you start climbing in and just then the alarms go off. And so you decide to start climbing out. Just then a, a big cop grabs you by the scruff of your neck and says, hey, you're under arrest, dude. You know, calm down. And, and, and we're, you know, so don't, don't make any sudden moves. And you, you stop. And the only thing you've got on you is a crowbar. Guess what? It's a burglary tool or a burglarious tool with the root word being burglar or to burgle. And so that crowbar you use to pry the window open is in the same category of tools that are illegal to be using in that manner, right up there with the lock picks and the pick locks and the tension bars and the slim jims and the slide hammers and the screwdriver, a screwdriver, okay? And so as you might have guessed by now, this is actually really just an enhancement, meaning that if you get busted for burglary, let's suppose that you you came over, you check the window and the window is open. So you slide the window up and you climb in and you get caught in that act, okay? You might be in the act of burglary, okay? But the moment they say, oh, by the way, he had a, he had a screwdriver in his back pocket or, or a uh, floor safe door puller uh, or a pick lock or a key bit, okay? Those things, they can say, oh, we've got you for two things now. We've, we've got you for violation of the burglarious and larcenous instruments and deadly weapons section of the law. And we've also got you for burglary. It's just another thing they can, they can throw in there to, 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 to pile on. I mentioned earlier that I used to have, a, when I worked at the gas station, a pretty good ability to pop open door locks on, on cars that were built before 1980 using a, what they call a Slim Jim. And a Slim Jim is actually a long piece of really, really narrow metal. A long piece. And it usually has a little notch cut out at one end so that you could then slide it through the door frame at, the, at you know, the windows here, the door frame is here. You could slide it down between the window and the door frame. And if you knew what you were doing, you knew where to stick this thing and grab onto the mechanism in there that, that worked that door lock that you see popping up and down in the old style doors. And there was a time when if I walked up to a car and I recognized the car and I knew what type of car it was and I'd done one before, I could get into it in three seconds. And a Slim Jim, having that ability to get you into any locked car, as you can imagine, for a burglar or a larceny uh, expert or a burglarious criminal, uh, you can imagine that a Slim Jim back then would actually work wonders for you just getting into locked cars. Two things to remember, though, when I was doing it, I was being requested to do that by the owners of the cars who were standing right there going, I locked my keys in the car. And some of these were regular customers of the gas station. I know who they were. Hey, how you doing? Lock my keys in again. Okay, walk over, Slim Jim, and I pop door open. And they get charged for a service call. Um, but again, likewise, a licensed locksmith could drive around with his stuff in his car all day long and not get in trouble for it. And of course, a police officer comes by and sees a guy who's working the you know torsion bar and the, the tension bar and the, and the rake, and he's, and, he's, and he's picking a lock. Cop walks, was, excuse me, what are you doing? He goes, oh, you know, I just, I was called by the homeowner to come out here and unlock the house. Uh, they locked the door and, and, and the cop goes, where are they right now? And they, oh, they ran down the street, they'll be right back, you know. So if you were requested to do this by somebody and you have permission, you're obviously not committing any crimes, so you can possess this stuff. But the question becomes, what were you doing with it when the police officer encountered you and found it on you or in your possession? So again, in Michigan and in many other states, including California, uh, these things in your possession are not necessarily illegal. It could be in your state, but not in Michigan or California. But the question then becomes, what were you doing or intending to do with them while they were in your possession? But mere ownership and mere possession of them with no other facts 
generally is not against the law. So in Michigan, it's MCL 750.116, burglar's tools. And in California, it is, in fact, the penal code, um, let's see, chapter 3, uh, burglarious and larcenous instruments and deadly weapons, 466 is the section, section 466. So that's the answer with respect to lock picks, pick locks, crowbars, uh, and any number of other things, including nitroglycerin, explosives, and thermite. <laughs> things I never thought I'd be talking about. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later.